trying to find the truth, you can find some reason. But the Quran is clear. It needs no defense. The life of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, is profound, like the sun in the sky. It needs no defense. Islam as a system of life needs no defense. I only say to you, stop asking all these questions and simply take the test, like they say. Take the Pepsi challenge. <laughs> Read the Quran with an open heart. Read about the life of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, with an open heart and an open mind. Then after that, examine the system of Islam with an open heart. Whether you're a lawyer, a doctor, an architect, whether you're poor, you're rich, you're whatever it is, I guarantee you, your life will never be the same. Why do you cover your head? Well, I don't know. I started moving all my hair, so I said... So. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Muslims, <laughs> Muslims cover their heads, Muslim men cover their heads out of tradition and out of respect. Not all Muslim men cover their heads, obviously, but those that do, they do so because at times, the Prophet, peace and blessing upon him, he liked to do that. Uh, for me, I like to distinguish myself as a Muslim. And whether I'm wearing a suit and tie, which I do sometimes, or whether I'm wearing a gown like I'm wearing today, I like to cover my head because not many people cover their heads. Not many Muslims, not many men, period, cover their heads with a brimless cap. So if I'm in an airport, I'm always designated. You know what that means, right? <laughs> I always ask the people... I always ask the people in the lounge when they say, Mr. Yassin, um, you've been randomly selected. <laughs> I say, I know. I'm designated, right? And I turn around to the other people in the lounge and I say to them, is there something distinct about me that I should always be designated? And what do you think they do? They say, yes. <laughs> so, yes, Muslims, many Muslims, Choose to cover their heads, just like most Muslim men, following the tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, choose to grow a beard. So wearing of the beard and the covering of the head together, that kind of like a, that's an indication that a person is a Muslim. Usually now, because it could be a Buddhist, could be a Hindu, could be a Sikh, it could be a Jewish person, but it's a different, usually a different kind of hat. So. Wearing of the beard is a tradition. Doesn't mean that a person who cuts their beard off, they're not a Muslim, but most Muslim men, because it's the tradition of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that he told us to do, they usually grow a beard. And some of us, we like to cover our heads. Now, for the Muslim ladies, that's different. The covering of their head, and the wearing of loose garment, and the covering of their bodies, and the not showing of their attractions, is a part of their uniform. God has given the Muslim ladies a specific uniform. So they would be distinguished and known as Muslim ladies. And they would not be molested. And that in the streets, when men see them, just by their, the way they're dressed, they would get some kind of respect. You don't hardly hear men whistling at Muslim ladies. So, I mean, and don't think that the Muslim ladies are any less beautiful than any other woman. It's just that they hold and cover their beauty for their husbands. It's like pearls and diamonds. If I came to your house and I asked you, can I see your diamonds? Can I see your money? Can I see your jewels? Can I have your pin number? You wouldn't give it to me, and you wouldn't have it in front of me. Well, our women, our wives, and our mothers, and our daughters, they're worth more to us. They're more precious to us than our diamonds, our gold, and our pin number.
uh, is the translation of English sufficiently accurate? Um, actually, no language can adequately translate the Qur'an. The Qur'an is only in Arabic. It is only in Arabic. It's the formula of the revelation itself. However, the meanings of the Qur'an can be rendered into various languages. So that's all it is, a rendering. It is not a translation. Okay, I think that, is there more questions? I'll answer two or three more. Is that okay? Maybe uh, he meant by the Comforter to be the Holy Spirit. Maybe the Spirit. Maybe Jesus spoke as if Jesus also said that I am the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus didn't speak Greek. Now, Jesus didn't speak Greek now. Jesus spoke Aramaic. Now, what is Alpha and Omega in Aramaic? Alpha and Omega is part of the Greek language, isn't it? Isn't it? Jesus didn't speak that. This is something that somebody asserted to Jesus Christ. And this is the whole problem. You have people continuing to tagging stuff on Jesus Christ, saying something about Jesus Christ, lying on Jesus Christ, fabricating on Jesus Christ, blaspheming God, attributing things to Jesus Christ with no evidence and no proof except their own desires. Jesus didn't say this. And you're, you're reaching for straws, but you're out in the middle of the ocean. How do you explain evolution? Darwin didn't explain it well. Now here's a man, Darwin, Charles Darwin. Let's look into his life for a moment. Charles Darwin said that man evolved from monkeys. Did he say that? Okay, let's look at this here. I mean, he's gone, but let's you and I look at it now in the light of scientific exploration and fact. Do monkeys cry? Do monkeys cry? No, they don't. Monkeys do not have the intellectual capacity or emotion that they cry. Human beings do. That's just, a, that's just as much a part of their being as is their physical being. Yes, monkeys are mammals, and human beings are mammals. But do monkeys calculate? Do monkeys orchestrate? Do monkeys investigate? Do monkeys earn PhDs? Do monkeys put up buildings? Do monkeys build zoos and put human beings in them? Finally, if man was evolved from a monkey, wouldn't he still be evolving? What have we evolved to? And if man has evolved, if monkeys have evolved into men, why are monkeys still here? Darwin's theory lived about 25 or 30 years after he died. No one still puts forward the idea of Darwin's theory of evolution. That idea is dead just like communism is dead when the Soviet Union was dismantled. And if you're still talking about evolution, then you're really a bush doctor looking for a cure for, for polio. It's over with. It's finished. And that is not even the issue. It's that is not even the issue. The issue is, if Darwin feels that the theory of evolution is what we call natural selection, then we might connect to that because God was the one that made the natural selection for us to be here. But Darwin didn't say that. The other thing is that, don't put too much stock on Darwin now because you've got to look at his personal life. He was a bit confused himself. Now, I don't like to talk.